Hello and welcome to the first episode of my new Free Kingdoms series on the new DLC, The Furious Wild. I'm going to be playing as King Mulu. Sorry, not King Mulu, just Mulu. He's just he's the chief, actually. Mulu, Mulu. Chief Mulu. Um, so yes, we have uh, the new DLC available to us. Uh, you've already seen a couple of videos on my channel. Maybe you haven't, but you should have. They're there anyway to watch. A um, couple of battles I did with some units, one battle where I used some elephants and tigers versus a normal army. And then another battle that was just a bunch of the new units, just a bit of a showcase basically. But now I'm finally allowed to show you guys the campaign. Uh, you are currently watching this in video format as you probably would have realized by now. However, uh, this series will continue on tomorrow or the day after as a streamed Let's Play. Uh, I am still away on holiday but I will be returning back tomorrow I believe. Uh, I mean, by the time you're watching this, obviously, not right now, as I'm recording this. Um, but yeah, that's the reason why this is a, this first video is a, uh, well, this first episode is a video and not a stream. So, King Mulu. The reason I've chosen him is because he is, uh, well, he's got Master of the Elements, but he basically is the elephant guy. He likes elephants, he uh, is the elephant specialist, if you will. Uh, but just the animal specialist in general, but mostly elephants. Um, you can see already that he has uh, two unique units, which uh, are elephants, war elephants and southern elephants. The war elephants being the stronger of the two. And also the uh, ravine warriors, which are uh, pretty crap, actually. We'll see them in a minute. Um, of course, though, uh, with the uh, southern tribe factions, the Namban factions, uh, no matter who you play, you will eventually have access to all other units anyway. Uh, well, not necessarily, but uh, usually you will because the game is all about, or the, the deals, the, the campaign is all about uniting the tribes. And once you unite the tribes, in fact, it'll, it'll state it here. Fealties are gained through conquering Nanman factions. Each tribe starts as one and must gather the others to unite the tribes. So basically, what it means is that you will either vassalize or um, uh, confederate the other factions, and that will bring them, that will give them your fealty or give their fealty to you, whatever, uh, which allows you to get their unique units and all that kind of stuff, all the bonuses they, they would normally get. Uh, but I'll, I'll get to that in a minute. So yeah, Mulu, uh, Chief of Bana Ravine, his playstyle focus is like I said, Master of the Elements, his starting situation is normal. His unique resource is Pride, uh, and he also has Rituals, which uh, will come after a couple of turns. So our Pride, defeat high-ranking characters to gain Pride quickly, we gain access to multiple animal units, we conquer regions to learn new rituals, and then we research economic reforms faster. Already went over the unique units. Also, this whole screen is new, by the way. I haven't really actually touched on that yet, but it's nice. Also, the start dates for these factions are 190 CE and 194 CE. Uh, but yeah, now you also have like the full character statistics here as well. So we have uh, our traits, which are enigmatic, wise, and solitary. And then uh, our Nanman bonus is plus 10% campaign movement range and minus 10% for animal uh, upkeep for animal units. Having said that though, when I jump into the game, because I, I thought these were uh, basically his um, his like faction-wide buffs, or like his buffs anyway, they don't have to be faction-wide, but like um, his buffs for, for, for his character, but the uh, plus 10 campaign movement range doesn't actually show up, so I, I wonder if they changed that at some point and then haven't updated this screen yet or something. I should also quickly mention that uh, we got access to this like basically about a month before they even announced it. They announced it a couple days ago. We've had access since the 24th of July, but we weren't allowed to record it until a couple days ago. Currently, as I'm recording this, it's the 10th of August. Um, but yeah, we weren't allowed to record it because basically we got so early access because of Troy coming out, it didn't want to overflow uh, us with too many projects to do. So we got really early access so we could have prepared a little bit in advance. But we couldn't record because there was uh, still a lot of bugs in the game. They've fixed like a hundred something bugs in the last update, which was a couple days ago. But there are still some in the game, including, which I'll show you now, uh, or not show you, is the uh, trailer it doesn't have any audio. Uh, or not any voices or anything, so I'm gonna skip over that. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have the trailer available yet, otherwise I'd put it in there. Uh, but I will probably play another Nanman faction in, in the future, uh, and then I'll be able to have the trailer in there. It's not really a big deal, of course, but uh, yeah, the trailer isn't out yet at this current date. By the time you see this video, it will be out already, but I haven't got it right now, so I can't do anything about it, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, not a big deal, it's just a trailer. Um, but yeah, there will be some other bugs perhaps as well, maybe some changes that still will be made. Again, this is several weeks before the game uh, is even out, or sorry, the DLC is even out, so... Yeah, 
中原祸乱频起，然则仅凭您一人之力，便可只手挽天青。拯救苍生，须得从长计议。各部族必须团结一心，听命行事。但您必须先镇压族内的不臣之徒。晋林的交趾蛮横好战，而您也不惧挑战。长远来看，让他们见识到自己的愚蠢行径很有必要。告诉他们，若不跪服，灭族之日不远矣。还有朵斯大王，他软弱无能，没有自保之力。也许他在为大王效力时，能有更好的表现。除此之外，汉朝的戍边将领如悬梁利刃，对南晋虎视眈眈。如若放任无事，必会为南晋招来灾祸。世燮奉皇命守卫国土，不过，他的存在只会腐化这片土地。一旦您的力量稳固，他亦必将与您为敌。届时，您当悉心守护此域。大王，汝乃七十二洞与野兽之共主，倾二者之力对抗敌人，领南境众部落齐心合力，则可稳固如巨树，根于厚土。All right, thank you, Han Empire advisor lady. Very helpful. King of Bana Ravine. I'm gonna. I really want to say banana, but people were like, "Oh, it's such a shit joke." It is, actually. Anyway, King Mulu, long have you defended with an unmatched power against those who would seek to corrupt and pollute the land. Now that strength is required more than ever to unite the tribes against enemies within and without. The Han looms large, whilst the tribes threaten to tear each other apart. Unite them, Mulu, and let land and beast prosper once again. We need to conquer target rit ritual regions to unlock powerful bonus for your faction, and due to our connection with the natural world, animals units cost less and are more powerful. We need to take out... This faction right here, destroy or vassalize them, the Jiao Shi tribes. Uh, yeah, let me just read that, just a normal mission. We got some ancillaries as well, of course. Nothing particularly special, that's all right. So, let's go over all the new features before we jump into that battle uh, quickly. Well, I mean, I guess the first thing we can do is have a quick look at a unit. So we start off with a unit of Southern Elephants. We also start off with King Mulu. Sorry, I keep saying, keep saying King Mulu, it's just Mulu. It's just a dude, he's a chief. Chief Mulu. Uh, he starts off on a Southern Elephant as well, which uh, is pretty damn sweet um, because it's, uh, yeah, basically elephants are now, uh, at least for Nanman leaders, I'm not sure about Han, but I'm pretty sure just for the Nanman, uh, yeah, they're a, an actual um, ancillary that you can use as a horse or as a mount, basically, which is awesome. Uh, this guy starts off with a normal red horse, though. Um, so yes, okay, I guess we can have a look at that. The level up system is new for these characters as well. So whenever you level up, you get a point that you can spend in one of the five um, attributes. So just the normal ones that you already know, Sentinel, Champion, Strategist, Vanguard, and Commander. So basically you get to choose how you level up your character uh, in terms of where you put your points. And then these things down here, 15 of them, are personal goals. So these are things that you unlock by just playing. So this, for example, is win battles with this character. If you win 15, we get plus 20 morale. If we win 30, we get 40 morale, etc. Uh, this one requires us to increase the rank of infantry units in this character retinue. Uh, if we get 30 of them, we will uh, get all of the bonuses you see there. Upkeep cost reduction for sword and shield infantry and spear infantry. And then basically these top ones all have like three different levels to them. And all the, oh, oh, you can actually track them as well, which is nice. So you can, you can actually click on whichever ones you want to click on. Then they'll show up here. So you can easily keep track of all of them, which is very cool. Uh, but yeah, these top ones um, have um, three tiers to them. And then the, all the other ones are just, you, you do them and that, that's it. So uh, this one, for example, we need to occupy settlements with this character, 15 of them, we get terror. This one, we fight siege battles, 10 of them, and we get plus 15% campaign movement range, etc. I believe all of these are the same for every single character though, all the personal goals, so nothing special for faction leaders. Um, and I'm also currently actually unsure where you get your abilities from, unless they are also in here. I, I imagine they actually would be, although I don't see any of them. 
Naval Nightbell is known. There's no abilities here. So I, I actually I wonder how you get your abilities. Uh, but having said that, you don't really need abilities when you're sitting on top of a freaking elephant, which comes with its own abilities. So you got Gore, a melee attack. Stomp, a melee attack. Gore is like a ton of uh, damage to a single target, I think. Stomp is AoE around the target or around yourself. And then Trumpet is a, uh, a morale debuff. Pretty damn sweet as well. Um, he starts off with an ability as well. I can see it here. The uh, Fury ability, which gives him plus 10% speed and plus 10 morale. I'm not entirely sure how you get other abilities. Maybe you just get them from leveling up or something, but I currently actually don't know. Uh, we got Off Guard as well ability, but I'm pretty sure that one is, is an ability you can only use on foot because it doesn't even show up here right now. Um, so I guess if I were to give him a horse, but then I can't give the mount back, so let's not bother with that right now. Also, here you can see the minus 10% upkeep for animal units and plus 5% charge bonus for elephant units, which it didn't show in the uh, character selection screen. And it doesn't show the minus or plus 10% movement range here, so that's why I thought maybe they changed it. But maybe that stat is somewhere else, because also if I look at this, there's no plus 10% movement range. So I don't quite know what happened to that, but yeah, either they changed it or it's just not in, a, in the same uh, position as I expected it to be. Anyway, so yeah, those, uh, we have the elephants, as I said, we've got some slingers, we have the Nanman warriors, which is just your basic infantry, and we have Nanman spearmen. Uh, I keep saying Nanman, is it Nan Nanman? Nanman? Nan okay, I'm gonna get corrected on those. After this one, like I said, it's gonna be streaming, and then people can correct my pronunciation. Also, names of characters, this is not really something that's particularly necessary to talk about, but yeah, names of characters are fucking wild. This guy's, well, furious, really wild, in fact. Nuo Ba Erle. I don't know if that's pronounced correctly, but God, I was getting used to pronouncing Chinese names, and now we get names like Nuo Ba Erle. Like, what is that? We got a couple over here as well. Wu Che Li Zhe, Nuo Ba. Oh, that's my. Wait, is this the same name? Oh, it is actually. What the hell? Anyway, Wu Che Li Zhe. That that one's all right. Um. Anyway, so yes, that's that. Then we have our uh, research or re our reforms. So reforms are. Once again, unique. So now I think there's four different uh, reform trees in the game. You've got the, of course, the regular Han faction one. You've got the Yellow Turbans got their own. The Bandits have their own now as well. And the Nanman now also have their own tree. So I haven't looked at this too much yet. Uh, I, I should do this off camera a little bit more uh, as well. But um, yeah, there's, there's obviously, you know, there's three different rows that you can go into. And each one will do different things. This one's uh, got some trade in it, which is always great. Um, uh, character salary. So this one looks like a little bit like the, the blue one from the regular tree. But um, yeah, so there's lots of different things. But for now, we can only choose elephant taming, which uh, gives us another elephant to use after five turns. So this is not like the Han tree. This one is actually, I think, similar to the yellow turbans one, where it's actually research rate. So I, uh, I click on one, and instead of unlocking immediately, it takes five turns to then unlock, and then you choose another one. Like, you know, most Total War games, of course. Um, but of course, in, in Free Kingdoms, the regular Han are different. Uh, and we also have a little bit of extra research rate, which comes from somewhere, which I'm sure I'll find out soon. I can't quite remember. Um, it's from here. Plus 20%, 25% research rate, non money economic, which actually, and also plus 15% upkeep for all units. Damn. Prefers the company of animals to humans as it has a strong bond in the natural world. Interesting. I didn't even noticed that before. Access to ec economic tier 2 reforms before uniting the tribes. Oh, cool. Anyway. Um, so then there is the uniting the tribes thing so the tribal uh is it tribal feature fealties of course yes so quickly explain this we are right here in the middle if you're playing one of the other like if, let's say you're playing lady jurong lady jurong will be in the middle uh here you can see all the bonuses you get from uh being you, like yeah being you so this is your uh we get plus, plus 10 prestige plus one available armies plus research rate available tribal council positions we unlock the ravine warrior unit which is our one of our unique units we have an extra two southern elephants for recruitment and one extra war elephant for recruitment and then minus five diplomatic relations with the han empire which every single one of these gets then around the uh the main one you have six uh, other ones so these are the three other major factions so the playable factions ladies you wrong uh shimok Shimoke, Shmoke, I'm not entirely sure, and Menghuo. And then you have uh, Duosi, who is also a unique character, uh, or has unique art anyway. And uh, Wutugu also has unique art. And then there's Yang Feng, which I'm pretty sure is just one of the generic ones that they chucked in here because it looks better. Uh, and then you have uh, 12 total uh, minor tribes, and all of these give uh, a little bit of a bonus as well. But uh, to a minor or to a lesser extent. So there's some prestige, research rate, income from commerce. This one gives prestige, in, uh, research rate, and melee damage, etc. And then the other major ones, they all have something attached to them, something different attached to them. So for example, Lady Zhirong is, of course, the uh, tiger 
uh, faction leader. She focuses on our tiger unit. So with her, we get uh, extra tiger warriors available for recruitment, tiger slingers available for recruitment, and her unique unit, the followers of the flame, and uh, some other bonuses on top of that. And of course, with Mang Huo, for example, we get his unique units, the Nanjong champions and Nanjong spearmen, and some Nanjong elephants available for recruitment as well. So again, basically, whenever you confederate or vassalize one of these factions, they will give you their fealty, and you get the bonuses from that faction. So, that's that. Uh, then we have the court. The court is unique as well for the Nanman. So we have ourselves up here. We have a faction heir, an advisor, a seer, a tribal council, and cave lord. Uh, I don't quite know what they all do. I should probably have a proper look at these as well. But right now, we, can, we have one ca uh, tribal council available. We also have one uh, unhappy fellow over here, Li Bao. Li Bao. Um, who has also, uh, he's ambitious, so he has increased penalty for desire, from Desire for Higher Office. So he's pretty damn unhappy right now, so I'm probably going to put him in here. Currently, this gives you uh, plus 5% trade influence and minus 2% corruption, uh, but he does need it. It does cost 200 bucks uh, in uh, salary, though, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, um, that is about all of the unique stuff I need to talk Oh, yes, of course, our, our actual um, um, resource. So we have Pride. So, uh, pride goes down, uh, minus 4 per turn, later on at minus 8, minus 10, minus 12, but it is a purely positive thing. So even at level 0, or yeah, level 1 I guess, barely recognized, we have minus 15% upkeep cost for animal units. Uh, increasingly known, we get animal handler units, which are the tigers uh, and possibly something else, but I think just the tigers, because they, they handle the tigers. Also elephant units, uh, range damage for animal uh, troops more upkeep reduction and melee damage for all animal troops and then those buffs just get better the further you get along so minus 60 percent upkeep for animal units for example pretty damn insane um we can uh, make the pride go down slower by unlocking certain rituals uh, rituals is something we'll get into i think next turn or the turn after so you'll see those coming up at some point as well uh so i don't want to talk about them yet because that's basically pointless right now so yeah, that's our resource, and then also you can see up here how many tribes we have united, which of course currently is just only us, which doesn't really, it shouldn't even really count as uniting my own tribe, but anyway, that's not the point. Maybe, I, I guess it is. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, we have our town. Oh, one more and more unique thing is this dense jungle, so uh, you'll see this in any of the Nanman territories. Uh, I don't know if there's actually any other unique things, like maybe other towns have... I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. May, maybe there are other ones, or maybe this is the only new unique one. But yeah, this maybe like desert in the northwest or something. I have no idea if that's actually a thing, though. But right now, Dense Jungle gives uh, non nan -man factions some debuffs, and it gives non -man factions some buffs, uh, which is pretty cool. And again, maybe there's some other unique terrain features in other territories as well, but I have no idea. Also, the UI. You can see the UI is updated for the non -man factions, but for the Han factions, it still looks the same as before, which is cool. I like that. Makes them stand out a lot more. Uh, and I think, honestly, that's probably all I have to cover right now. So, oh, I guess, yeah, we have this as well. Uh, I guess I haven't even checked our victory conditions. I don't even know if we, like, declare ourselves emperor or something. I imagine not. We are currently a headman. We're going to become chieftain. But I can't, even, I can't see the Nanman Kingdom one, so I don't even know what our actual goal is, to be honest, in this campaign. I think I may have seen it somewhere, but I can't remember that right now. It doesn't matter. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Um, so yeah, we have a mission to take out that faction, so I think we're just going to jump into a battle now. I am still considering to uh, give this guy a core position, but 200 bucks per turn early on is quite a lot of money. Um, trade influence is pretty relevant. Speaking of, I should do some diplomacy before we go into war. So... I've already played a little bit, uh, like a, only like an hour of this campaign, but a little bit of this campaign. Um, and oh, I can't actually trade with anyone right now, that's weird. I definitely had that available last time on the world, that's weird. Maybe it's because I, I took out these guys. Either way, yeah, I, I guess I, yeah, I, I tried to train with these guys, but I maybe I took them out first, so we'll do that first. Let's do a battle. I can show you guys the strength of the elephants. It is, they're a lot of fun. Let's put it that way. You'll see them in a second. Uh, or if you've already seen my video, the battle, you'll see them there as well. But uh, we've got uh, a general, Yunu, against us. Oh, I haven't even looked at our incendiaries and all that yet. I guess I can do that real quick. Hold on. We have some incendiaries to give out and also some uh, weapons to look at. So as I we already looked at the elephant. We have our unique armor as well, which gives us more cunning. So he definitely looks like he's going to be a cunning character, so we want to go for our range units with him. Although, having said that, I'm not entirely sure what our army builds are going to be like yet. Of course, we have no... Cavalry with the Nanman factions. We also haven't got crossbows. We have other range units like 
uh, slingers that we have right now. I think we get some javelin throwers, we get um, blow darts as well, things like that. But no like long range strong units. I mean, we have some archers, but nothing like crossbows. And crossbows are of course like just still superior, I think. Um, so the point is that I don't quite know what kind of army you'd want to go for, because since you have no cavalry and you have no good range units, I think you're going to end up very quickly becoming a very aggressive army with little to no range units. Maybe your elephants have range, but that's, you know, that's it. Um, and you just want to charge in as fast as humanly possible. Um, so I think what a very common theme is going to be is that you have uh, elephants charging in, rampaging through the enemy lines. That will give your infantry a chance to run up and not get shot to death by range units. And then, yeah, you just get into melee and start murdering stuff and running rampant of elephants. I think that's like going to be the main goal. But then, of course, you need something to also hold back the enemy cavalry or protect yourself from enemy cavalry. And, of course, in this game, uh, something that works out to my favor a lot of times, but will not do in this campaign because I don't have any of my cavalry. Um, but, yeah, something that in this game is a feature or the way combat works anyway is that when a unit even a spear unit charges into cavalry uh, if the cavalry is charging into you as well the cavalry will just demolish the infantry unit even if it's an anti-cav unit of, except for the super late game units of course like super heavily armored but even then um so yes i that's it's very difficult to protect yourself against cavalry except for by except by standing still and and receiving the charge but uh, that's something for uh somewhere in the future so no need to worry about that right now anyway yes ancillary so we have a plus two cunning plus two authority i'm just going to give that to actually yeah that was you give that to you and we have uh oh yeah we get mulu's bell as well i forgot to talk about that and we have uh resolve and a stone pig so this guy is actually kind of uh instinct based he does have two level ups already which have gone for sentinel and commander which is a bit of a shame because he looks like because he gets this as well he looks like he would have been a good guy for um Controlling my elephants, which are vanguard units or red anyway. Um, although I think anyone can recruit anything, so I guess it doesn't matter a whole lot. Except, of course, the big bonus from ammunition is just it makes sense to give your range units those. Um, but other than that, all these other buffs are mostly like for yourself or like morale counts for all units, not just for cavalry or whatever. It's just that in the normal circumstances with the Han, you have to, you know, mix, like, m match the, the color to the color, but in this you can just recruit whatever you want. I can't recruit it now, I, right now, so I can't show you because it's just in the normal campaign. Uh, anyway, but I'll give him for now, uh, you know what, I'll, I'll give you, well, no, I'm gonna give you Mulu's bell, it's your own bell, you can use your bell, I think, and we'll give this guy uh, the instinct, yeah, just to increase his uh, instinct a little bit. So, after all of that, I think it's time to do a battle. So, it is a, a field battle. Um, it's a level one town, I think, so we can just take this. No problem. Uh, right, so yeah, the, the units. So they've got a general, they've got uh, two Nanman warriors, which we have as well. They've got one unit of Nanman spearmen, two units of Nanman slingers, and then a Nanman warriors captain, which is, of course, just a, a normal captain unit, a little bit better than the usual chaff. <laughs> Yi Okay, no, I definitely agree, buddy. You're right about that. All right, so let's have a, a very quick look at our units, all the individual ones, get our general in there as well. So here is our, or here are our Southern Elephants. The Southern Elephants are, like I said, the worst of the free elephant units. Although, eh, yeah, I, they're the cheapest ones anyway, but there are two, there are two types of elephants essentially currently. There's the Southern Elephants, and the uh, war elephants, I believe they're called, which are essentially made for charging in and murdering stuff. Uh, the southern elephants being the worst of those two. And then there's another elephant which is currently unique to uh, King Manghu, I think his name is. Uh, but of course we get them unlocked later as well. Which are uh, a support elephant, which are still also really amazing at murdering stuff. Um, but they are technically a support elephant, so they, um, they give some buffs, essentially. Uh, and then we have, of course, our elephant on our uh, for, for Mulu himself. Then we have our regular Nanman warriors with their nice uh, janky, like trip. Tr tr uh, what do you call this? 
tribal weapons and stuff. We have our slingers, I believe these are. Um, I don't know why they have these weird clubs, but I guess that's their melee weapon for when they get into melee. Our spear warriors and non-man spears, which have the little bamboo spear. Very cool. And then we have our other general, who also has that lovely tribal, like, just a wood or bamboo stuck to his chest and hope that it works out. Oh yeah, I haven't even talked about, about the weapons yet. There's unique weapons as well. Uh, Mulu does have his own normal, like the normal um, match Gian weapons, but he has a, a machete, but I'll, I'll talk about those later when we actually uh, have a look at all of them, basically. So that's our, uh, well, current units anyway. Let's make ourselves a line. Uh, yeah, let's just sit here in this little ravine. We already um, ravine clan, like we already something of the ravine, but Bana Ravine, right? So, you know, sitting in a ravine sounds like that's my uh, my kind of thing. But I set up the elephants on the sides, keep you guys up here, actually gonna have you, you, you just go straight up in there as well. I'm gonna show you guys the strength of the elephants. I'm gonna move up the entire army, but I'm gonna send the elephants in right away. Oh, go over there. Get these guys over here. And Mulu as well. Cavalry is a lot slower though, we got 61 speed as opposed to this guy's 104, so like almost double the speed of the elephant. So it's hard to actually see, yeah, hold on. You just can't see the character on the elephant until you get close, that's a bit weird. I should probably report that because I can't imagine that's normal. They may already be aware of it too, to be honest. Uh, and also, yeah, elephants for some reason start off fire at will. I don't know why exactly, but they do. Slingers also no nice to know, they have 92 ammunition, so I'm guessing they do basically just chuck any, any old rock at the enemy, which is cool. Um, but yes. Alright, so we have... I think they have... Yeah, they have one spear unit on the flank. It's a bit annoying. I should have put my elephants on the other side, I guess. But it doesn't really matter. We are going to get shot by their... By their slings, but it's okay. I'm actually just going to send my entire army in straight up, I think. Let's go over there. Start moving up, I guess. But I want to go into the elephants first, just so I can show you guys the absolute mayhem that elephants can cause. It's beautiful. It's a thing of beauty. It's kind of like a cherry unit in Troy, which I've been using a lot recently, of course. Um, because elephant units in Troy, or, or, or um, those units in, in Troy, oh, look at that. there's some morale debuffs as well, get in there. Uh, you basically just kind of, you charge them into the first unit, but then you just sort of run through. Uh, and get into the units behind. See here, watch the numbers dwindle on this unit. Not even doing that insane to be honest actually, but uh, we have crowded all the other units. We crowded that one in fact as well. Get into the spears, why not? I know they're anti-you, but also you guys are running. You're really quite slow. 407 kills already, so yeah, while we didn't see the, a lot of kills on that one unit, that was one of our strongest units in fairness. Um, so yeah, you, you run through a unit and you fucking destroy everything and it's kind of nice. I want you to come over and help against him. I guess I'll have you attack him as well. Slingers haven't done anything yet. The range is quite low. Get you over there as well. Elephants are just doing more murdering. 473 kills. They've actually already gone up to level 4. I have lost 6 of them and they do replenish quite slowly. When I fought this battle off camera before by myself, I actually didn't do that. Well, I wouldn't say this. I wouldn't say poor, this poorly, but yeah, I, I did better anyway. I lost less elephants, but I guess I didn't. I, I routed a unit too quickly with um, with him, which is a problem. I, it's a first world problem. That I routed the enemy too quickly. Send a morale debuff again, and that should route him as well. I think and then that'll be that. Still 18 elephants remaining. There we go. They ended up killing 590 dudes. Good stuff. Yeah, when I did this the first time around, they got 800 and something kills. It was certainly better, but uh, it's okay. You can also see the number here is actually a little bit different, because I think it also takes into consideration the people on top of the elephants. I'm not entirely sure. But it'd be cool if I had a unit of 36 elephants, I'll tell you. Yeah, 658 kills in the end. Not too bad. I'll take it. So here we have uh, some new options. So this is a little bit different than you what you might expect. So. Uh, this is, I think, unique to taking the Nanlan tribe settlements, of course, because the whole thing is we want to unite the tribes. So, the normal options are Occupy, Luton, Occupy, and Sack and Withdrawal, but there's penalties attached to these, so if you were to do this, uh, either one of these two at least, we, get, we still gain the fealties owned by this faction, um, 
if the faction is destroyed. So they, they only have one talent, so in this case they would. Um, but we lose a lot of faction support, and here, yeah, just the usual downsides of settlement level be, will be reduced. Sacking um, is just kind of sacking. There's no actual necessary penalty to this other than the penalty that you normally have. And then there's the two new ones, so we can either sort of confederate, because this is their final town, or we can uh, vassalize them. Uh, also because it's their final town, I guess. I'm actually not sure exactly how that works if it's not their final town. We don't have, not have a choice. Anyway, the point is, um, yes, yeah, so we can confederate or vassalize. So confederate means I take their lands, I get their characters and, and all that stuff, but it may be seen as an act of treachery, and I do gain their fealties as well, of course. If I vassalize them, I leave them alive, I still gain their fealties. Uh, and of course they are a vassal, which is always nice as well. Normally I like to take as much land as possible, but I think what we want to do, what the goal would be, is to try and uh, vassalize uh, as many of these factions as possible. So I get all their fealties, and I, I get the bonuses from them, but they are my vassal, and then I can come out of this Naman territory, because some of them will be dead or, or taken out by other factions, but I come out of this ter out of the Naman territory with like, I don't know, five to ten vassals or something along those lines and then we start attacking the Han territory when we have like five to ten vassals we're going to be making money from all of our vassals and all that too so yeah, i'm going to vassalize and that gives me the Zhaoji tribes um fealty so we get prestige um research rate and income from commerce from that and also of course the minus five diplomatic relations but again that's the same for sorry literally every other faction that we have here Got two grand from that. Uh, we got a new mission to control four settlements. Uh, we have currently got two. And we vassalized our boy and we gained the fealty. So there you go. Now I should be able to trade. No, what? that's weird. Okay, so that's really weird because I I started this campaign earlier and I was able to trade with Ahunan immediately. Why is it different now? That seems really weird. I did it on the first turn, it was, it was a 0.9 bonus and now it's a minus 2.1 how does that even how how could that possibly be different that's so weird okay anyway um you're gonna head that way uh we have a general that's unha unhappy yeah let's let's just do it let's give him uh give him that rule corruption reduction is completely pointless right now but so be it i mean that's the only other thing i did so unless that somehow changes no i don't know what the hell happened i don't know why we can't trade with him he liked me before as well, now he's dis he dislikes me. I don't quite know how that's even possible that there's two different things happening, but... Oh well, it's all good. No trade for me, I guess, uh, and no other deals either. I have no food, so I can't trade away any food, but that's not a problem. We also have a level up on our boy. So, again, if I'm going to be going... if I, I don't even know if I'm going to have any range units, but if I am, I should just keep going for a strategist. Um... Because he already has such high cunning, it, it makes sense that to, to go for that. Even if I end up not going for range units, then so be it, I guess. So I'm going to go for strategist and apply that. Uh, and now you can see we have a, some of these are actually on their way to, to, work, to doing something. So this one requires me to personally kill units. We got 230 out of 900, but 300 we get the first tier. Um, this one, for some reason, it started uh, keeping track of. I don't know why it pinned that one but not the other ones. But yeah, this one has us increase the rank of cavalry and animal units in the character's retinue. This one has us fight siege battles, which I guess also that counts as a siege battle, which is kind of weird because it shouldn't be, but sure. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll keep track of that one. I don't think I'm going to keep track of that one, though. But the one where we murder people, that sounds like an easy one to keep track of. Uh, cool, so that's that. Uh, I've given away all my ancillaries, so nothing else to do. Right, weapons. So I, was, I can have a quick look at this. So there's three types of uh, shitty weapons right now, these for him, uh, which are the machete, the stone axe, and the twin flint weapons. So this gives nine expertise and a f uh, six of 40. This gives minus three expertise and nine resolve, and this gives just straight up six resolve. So stat wise, this one is by far the best, in my opinion. Um, and then weapon or damage wise they all have 30 melee attack and this one has the highest or like the, the best combination I think of damage this one has more base but less uh, armor piercing and this one straight up just has less armor piercing and nothing else so I think this machete is probably the best weapon out of the three just in general even if you're going for different stats to be honest and finally we can upgrade our building which is also unique uh, to us or at least to the territory uh, and uh, one thing to note as well is that the garrison does grow at level 3, but not to the size that it grows in uh, for Han level 3 buildings. So this uh, actually requires to get to level 5 before it actually has a decent sized garrison, which is a bit annoying and harder to defend. But of course you have these bonuses of the enemy always being tired, 
uh, or at least the Han ter uh, enemy. So if they were to evade here, then you have those natural defenses as well. So I think that is finally that for this turn. We gained uh, three pride. We're going to lose four, so we're, just, we're losing it, basically. We're not gaining anything, but that's okay. We got two out of 19 tribes now united. Let us end the turn and get a move on. I haven't even actually shown you guys the uh, upkeep cost, but because we have so many upkeep cost reductions, our elephants are actually quite cheap. Also, you can see that all the factions got a new, um, new flag. I'm super happy that I never used the flags in my um, thumbnails, because that would have really pissed me off if I had to redo all my thumbnails. The Ritual of Stone Forest. So these are the, there's the rituals coming in. It is said that Ishima, having forbidden to marry her love, have been forbidden to marry her love, turned into a stone within the stone forest. This powerful symbol attracts many pilgrims to the grey walls of the forest, and the site itself contains a strange power. So we have now got two rituals available, which will happen... Uh, I don't know if it's random, but they'll basically next turn you'll see, see the first choice pop up. Uh, so one of them gives us construction cost uh, increase and construction time increase, but we get satisfaction in public order, and the other one is basically the opposite. But we'll get to those in a minute. So, uh, can I now trade with anyone? No, I, this guy's actually trading with someone else, I guess, now. I, it's so weird that I... He's trading with Lady Zhu Rong. In the last... <laughs> last time I tried this, which was like a couple of hours ago, he, I traded with him and he got attacked by Lady Zhu Rong. Zhu Rong. What the hell is happening right now? This is, like, this is the complete opposite of what was going on before. I'm half tempted now, actually, to go and attack him instead, because I was going to go this way, which I'm pretty sure the quest actually tells me to go that way too. Um, but yeah, I'm tempted to attack him right now. But I think I'm going to stick to my plan. Can I get into town right now? No, I can't. All right, so... Um, right, so we are recruiting elephants. You can see it's going pretty damn slowly, though. We can now start recruiting actual units. So we can see what we have currently available. Three of them we already have, actually four of them, the Southern Elephants too. And now we have the Ravine Warriors uh, available for recruitment too. So the Ravine Warriors, compare them to the regular Nanman Warriors, which cost about 50 more upkeep, 55 more upkeep. Um, they are basically infinitely better. The only thing that these guys, Ravine Warriors, are going for them is higher base melee damage, but they have lower armor piercing, so that kind of makes up for it. Uh, they have lower attack rate too. Essentially, these guys are just... I don't know what but they are, what, the, what their role is supposed to be, but they look absolutely crap. Uh, they're expendable, which they certainly are. Um, but yeah, the Naman Warriors just seem like infinitely better, so I think we're just going to go with those. Also, we can see all the uh, stuff we're going to eventually get, which is pretty cool. Actually, also, it should tell me what it requires me, right? Or not. I guess this requires... Yeah, this tells me I need it from the Reform Tree. So we actually get some uh, mercenary units, um, which we would... I guess get from Sunjan or something. These are in the reform tree apparently. Uh, mounted archers as well. Uh, heavy mounted archers, mercenary cavalry, and also for some reason cataphracts, which means we do get some cav, but I, I'm sure these are limited or super high in the reform tree. And then we have all these other units, which we will eventually be able to recruit once we unlock them from the other characters. So you can see there's the Nanjong elephants as well. Uh, we have hidden vipers, which are blowpipes. We have the uh, animal handlers, which have tigers, and they have a sling themselves. We got javelin throwers, like I said, other blowpipes, poison darts, uh, fire archers. There's a lot of range units. There's a lot of everything, of course. And then these guys are also really cool, the followers of the flame. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that's that's all the um, unavailable stuff. But we'll get to that in the future. But now, the thing that I was going to talk about is the fact that we have. Uh, Southern Elephants and War Elephants available for, available for recruitment as well. I really wish I could have actually reached into my town and then recruited them because then of course I get to benefit from higher recruitment. I could wait a turn and do it next turn instead. Um, so just not recruit anything right now, which I guess is also possible. I could also sprint in here, but then I can't recruit anymore, so then what's the point? And I wouldn't even replenish these guys. Uh, but yeah, I want to sit in my town and, and recruit the two Elephants because cost-wise, for example, the Southern Elephants cost 294, which is about the same, it's actually, it's exactly the same as two of these guys. Except, you could clearly see that the Southern Elephants are worth a lot more than two of these crappy dudes right now. So these, and then imagine the, the War Elephants, which are even better, I guess comparing those two. Charge bonus is a lot higher, health is a lot higher as well. Uh, and of course, uh, they have the bonus of uh, Mighty Knockback, which causes extra damage from knocking back enemies. I don't know how much more damage you want than what we already saw from this unit, but hey, more is better, am I right? Um, but yeah, they cost a little less than 100 more, 
Uh, and again, I imagine these guys are definitely better than three of these units, and the, three of these are better, more expensive than one of those is. So, so anyway, elephants. Uh, I think you just want to recruit all three of them early on because they don't cost an insane amount. An extra six hundred bucks per turn, uh, eh, a little bit more. Um, but uh, yeah, we can we can afford that. And I've, I don't, like basically then we could basically take on any full stack. I'm pretty sure having three elephants, unless the enemy of course also has elephants, but they won't. So. Uh, my point, though, being that I'm going to go into here first before I start recruiting any units. We also have a character we could recruit in here, too. Uh, we have Nuo Ba Erle, but I don't think we really need to get another retinue in right now. He starts with an ability. Blow for blow. You can use if it has an... Oh, yeah, right. So this costs 10% of his, his age, uh, own health, and it does 22k, uh, 22k splash damage. Interesting different kind of ability. Uh, uh, I think that is that, though. Let's end the turn, and then we'll get to the rituals, which we'll see as well. Yeah, you can see all the flags now, by the way. So I keep, I should mention it at the beginning of the turn or end turn. But uh, yeah, they're all they've all been updated. There's a lot of updating me going into this DLC, or I think that might be free DLC actually, probably. All right, so the ritual begins. Up to four rituals have been randomly drawn from your pool of unlocked rituals. So we only have two right now, so they get randomly drawn once we have more than four. So, we saw them just now. They are uh, not quite as strong as they showed us uh, to be, though. Um, so, it's only minus 10% construction cost and plus zero construction time and minus five, minus three. So, not a huge deal. Having said that, though, um, we have no reason to go for... Normally, I'd be like, oh, yeah, construction cost is always nice. I can take the hit on public order of satisfaction. But... We don't really need to take the hit right now because we have nothing to build. We might have something to build next turn or, or something like that, but it's not really a huge deal. I'd rather just take the satisfaction of public orders to get the play super happy. It's only for free turns anyway. So I'm going to the ritual of the elephants, which makes sense because we are the elephant tribe. Uh, Meng Huo has confederated Janning tribes. Sounds good. Uh, and we have the ritual of the Zhu River, which we can unlock once we capture this region, which is exactly why I decided to go this way and not that way, even though I could have. So we get the ritual of the fish for Mulu, which gives us population growth, food production, and then minus income from all sources, which doesn't seem that great. Uh, we got some characters unlocked, uh, or not unlocked, available for recruitment. We can have a look at those, but since these um, factions, or these characters, uh, can you can level them up in any way you want, you really only ever want to recruit the guys with the best actual traits, because there's just like no, order, no reason to do anything else, really. Plus 10 melee evasion is pretty good, but careless is a bit shit. Uh, I don't want, I'm not want to recruit anyone anyone right now anyway, but yeah, minus 5 percent corruption would be great if it actually does work um, in the court later on. Anyway, let's go in there and let's recruit two elephants. And those are all the elephants I can have, but with that recruitment, the, we're going to be fully done in four turns. I don't know how long mustering is going to... Oh, mustering for eight turns. Yeah, four turns. I might start moving after three or something, but uh, there you go. Um, let's see if we have any other people we can trade with now. Nope, there's only Dong Chu now who are going to be declaring war on soon, so no need to do that. We have uh, Meng Huo we've met now, so we can see him up there. Can we actually see his armies? No, we need to see the, uh, the town there. Uh, and we can't build anything, so I think once again that's the end of the turn. We're still making money. Again, like there's just... The elephants are gonna make... They're just gonna win every single battle for us anyway, so there's like no point not to recruit them. Uh, yep, so let's end the turn again. We're also going to be unlocking another elephant soon as well, which is nice. Which means our both our generals are going to be... Oh my god, really? <laughs> okay, did not expect that. Oh my god, he's got so many... He's got such a personality, holy crap. Okay, well I guess we're aboard the uh, biggest of the four new factions. That's okay, we only have one town. If he comes this way, I guess I'm going to go that way as well, but I'll just replenish first. That's cool. Meng Huo declared war on me. What a, what a Meng... <laughs> um, this building is pretty crap, to be honest. It's just 30 more income. So how, how, how long is that going to take it to get that money back? But I'll still build it anyway, because I don't have anything else to do. We also have Zhu Bang Luo unlocked, or available. Cool. Uh, anyway, I'm going to just sit here for now. How many towns have you got? Two of them, for sure. Okay. Probably just those two, though. If, he, if he's not a war of anyone else, he's definitely going to be coming for me. He's at war with my vassal as well. Okay, so yeah, he, hopefully he's actually on his way to me, because I would love to just take him out right away. Sounds good to me. Um, our income has actually somehow go, gone up. No idea why. Yeah, that recruitment's going pretty fast. Elephants take a long time to replenish, but it's not too bad. 
I think what I'd like to do is put a bunch of slingers in here and then re-recruit these guys in this, or well, in a different retinue. Um, but I think for the moment I simply do not care enough to even worry about that, so I'm just going to leave it as it is. And I'm not going to recruit anything else, because again, I'm pretty convinced that free elephants will just slaughter any army he can come with. Although he actually starts with elephants too, that's something to keep in mind as well. So if his elephants will run rampant through my men, and then my elephants will run rampant through his men. I probably should put two spear units in that other retinue, actually. I think I'll do that this turn. I don't know how good elephants or spears are, are against elephants. They're probably better than anything else against elephants. But, or, well, range units probably are best. Oh man, soon Gianna's already gone. That was quick. Uh, yeah, so I'll put two spear units in here. I think that's not a bad idea. Should have done that sooner, but it's okay. Uh, replenishment is absolutely trash, by the way. It's it's not even like just bad for the elephants. It's actually just bad in general. Our, our, our replenishment is just not very good. What is your what are your bonuses, by the way? Available army faction wide. Oh wow, it doesn't even say like for being X character or something. Um, it's just generally available. Also, next turn we get an elephant. More elephants. I'll have all the elephants in the world, please. Uh, once again, I don't think we've got anything else to do, so. I got away from my replenishment. It's just super slow. Hopefully Meng Huo shows up this turn. And hopefully he doesn't have more than one elephant, because that could be tough. Oh, there he is. Why, hello there. Welcome to my humble abode. I don't- you're not in my Oh no, don't go that way! Don't do it! You're gonna- you're gonna get yourself killed! Prepare the economy. For our people to prosper and our armies to march, it is required that we strengthen our economy and infrastructure for what lies ahead. Ensure that the tea grower building has been built. And we get other stuff for free turns. Tea grower. And to defeat free get armies or garrisons as well for a military breakthrough. And we need to keep our enemies closer. To grow our nation, you must cooperate with other powers. Else your fledgling expansion will end just as soon as it has begun. We need to know 10 factions have a treaty with a faction. We have that, so that's done immediately. And our elephant taming is done. And there's that quest that's also done. Alright, a bunch more randos. And there's our war elephant. This one is a, only a uh, a bronze one, it looks like. Ugh, disgusting. Only has trumpet as an ability. Okay. Alright, we'll have a look at that in a second. It's probably still better than a horse, I'd imagine. I mean, it's a lot less slow, of course. Or a lot less slow, a lot less fast. Um, hold on, so let me compare her to my elephant currently. Yeah, it's a lot less damage. It's half the damage both in uh, melee uh, or in base and armor piercing. It has cunning instead of resolve, which actually makes me want to equip this one on Mulu, but because he's the ranged character. But right now, it doesn't really matter. That's something I'll probably worry about in the future. Um, and it's uh, a lower chance of evading capture post battle, and it only has trumpet rather than gorge, stomp, and trumpet. So I guess that's a big thing. I do wonder though, maybe. This guy, ah, um, Mulu's a lot better in fighting. I should just keep this horse, or keep this horse, keep this mount on him. I'll give you this uh, crappier uh, elephant. That's fine for now. Have a crappier elephant, would you? Right, now that I'm a little bit worried that he's going to get himself killed. Also, he has, how many elephants? I saw one, two, damn it. He's got two elephants. One elephant. Ah, ah, ah. If my vassal gets himself killed, which he definitely will do if he just stands there, I could move up next to him and help him out. I might even be able to tr uh, ambush. I could right there, but am I going to be in range of him? I don't... F maybe. The circles are pretty big in this game. I, I forgot. I can see his circle. So I'd be, like, right there. That's 20... Yeah, that would be in range, I think. 95% chance of an ambush. My elephants aren't fully replenished, but... I mean, this is the best chance of taking him out, right? So we've set up an ambush. I'm pretty sure we'll be in range. So if he moves, he'll probably actually move it. Well, no, if he follows the road, he'll he'll not move into my a uh, ambush, which means he can attack him, and then I'll be reinforcing. Hopefully it works out that way. I don't quite know. Anyway, we have a reform now that we can do. So what do we want to focus on? Uh, well, these ones are locked, so probably not these ones. We have these cho these ones to choose between. Uh, trade, a uh, trade influence, or income from commerce, so good spice. I'm definitely going for the trading, uh, the actual trade agreement, which is always nice. I wonder why these are locked. Like, what exactly the the rules are behind how this works? I don't quite know. I guess we'll, we'll have to figure. I'll have to figure it out off camera. Haven't looked into that enough just yet. Um, anyone want to trade with me? 
no, steals only Dong Chuna. I'm sure once I take Mangola's territories up here, which also brings me to war of Ahunan, who I currently have an aggression pack with, so I'll have to break that at some point, but that's okay. Um, tea Grower. Is that the building I currently have? No. I don't even know where we get a Tea Grower, to be honest. A uh, Tea House. Okay, so I'd have to... Well, that's my vassal, so that's not going to work. Um, and then we have Defeat Free Armies of Garrisons. Okay, cool. I'm excited for this battle. Let's, um, let's get to it, I guess. Get to it. Ambush succeeded. Okay, so... My ally will join, but because it's an ambush, he will actually join in after the battle has already started, right? Like, like basically three minutes after the battle starts, I believe. Well, either way, I got to do it. Now we can see something. I've already mentioned this, I think, on stream at some point. I don't think I was supposed to, but I did. Um, something's been fixed, or at least not quite fixed, but it's it, it's it's fixed in a way. It's It works differently now. Um, and that is ranged attacks now work. So now your army or your ranged units will start with fire will off. This is the, the workaround they have to do, basically. Okay, my reinforcements will come in. But I don't know if they're going to be on time. By the time they do arrive, my elephants will have run, run around everything already. Anyway, uh, they start off, uh, start a fire will off. But if you turn it on, it will then be fixed. So that should now work. They should now shoot, essentially. Right, so I think what I'll do is I'll basically do the same strategy I always do. Which is to just make a line. And instead of now having cavalry run rampant, we're going to have um, elephants run rampant. It's kind of the same thing. Uh, so yeah, my slinger should actually be able to fire from here now, which is a big deal. Also, I have my actual elephant. So you are not on an elephant as well. That's nice. Do you have any unique weapon, by the way? No, he has Master Gian as well. He has Defiant Cry, minus morale. Okay. Uh, I think I do have to deal with the Nanjong elephants here. I don't quite know how. I guess I need to use one of my elephants. I gotta remember, though, I have more elephants as well, which is the better units. I don't know if I can beat this unit by themselves while they're wounded, though. Again, they have two elephants as well. I think I'm just going to put my elephants at towards the front and then run rampant. I should also really use my spears. Because they have... Do they have any range units? They have one slinger back there, one slinger back there. Okay, so let's actually just put our spears in the front. Against those other ones. I mean, they'll still run through them, really, but... It's a bit, bit of a weird formation, but... Looks cool, right? Right or not? Actually, let's just put one of you guys here then. Or maybe two of you behind each other. Or maybe I should leave a gap for my slingers to hit through. I don't even know. Um, okay, and then I have three elephants. So, let's, yeah, let's start at the front. And basically just run rampant for everything. And then I have my boys too who will also join in doing the same thing. Or maybe I should have you guys just try and focus in, but if, the, if this elephant joins in, that would be really bad, but yeah, that's alright. You guys murder him, please. And this unit's also buffing, of course. So yeah, my slingers should be- oh, they're not in range, right, I was gonna say. They should be firing. These guys are firing now, okay. Oh, those are spears. Those are good spears as well, I forgot about that. Should have considered. My allies are coming in right away. They're not taking their time, which is good. You're attacking that unit, and I guess the elephants as well. There's the other elephant jumping in here too. I don't think these units are going to survive here, to be honest. I maybe overestimated how strong elephants are. This guy's getting fucking ruined right now. Actually, I'm not sure if that stacks or not. Let's get you in here. You as well. Maybe I should get my infantry in there. Fuck it. I mean, they're getting their infantry in there. Yeah, my elephants are dying right now. Let's try and run them through. But once they get bogged down, that's not really what you want to have happen. Yeah, they're, they're definitely dying here. 9, 11, yeah, okay. I, I, I think I overestimated them a little bit. You're being chased by this general there. It's the main guy. It's a bit of, sh uh, shame, of a shame as well. We've got one elephant routing already. And my other elephant here is not doing so hot either. Hmm. Well... I have a bit of a problem. Okay, so let's have you guys stop, and I'll fire at will. You should be firing. Uh, my 
Okay, General's running as well. Oh boy. I definitely overestimated the uh, strength of the elephants. That said, I still have a lot of my infantry remaining as well. Okay, that's good. That's... Oh, that's a lovely ability right there. Okay, let's get you back. I think I need to focus their generals. Oh man, my spears are getting ruined as well. Their elephants are all going in still. This is not good. You guys both came back. Let's get back into the... Slingers. I think I just overestimated everything. Oh man, my infantry is routing as well. This is not going well. I think I might be losing this right now. It's just I can't kill their elephants. These damn Nanjong elephants are strong. Strong. Their units coming back from routing as well. My my allies are joining in. Like even if I don't. Are you guys firing? By the way, yes, you are. It's not very much because you can't really see anything that you can fire at. I guess. You came back from routing, I can't really do much with you. Get into the infantry over here, I guess. Men are running. They certainly are. Oh, I totally didn't realize you weren't actually doing anything. My other elephant is completely fucked off at this point. Man, this uh, went way more poorly than I expected it to. We're being attacked by these boys. Again, though, if my, if my ally can fix this up, it's okay. Because I, I wasn't going to go on the offensive after this anyway. If I, as, long, as, as long as I, my units survive, for the most part, it's okay. Yeah, this one, more poorly than I expected, I'll say. Mengo, is he even wounded yet? He's got 30k HP, man, he's not even fussed about this. Yeah, run through these elephants, murder them all, please. That charge right there. Oh my god, I killed two elephants. <laughs> oh, that's so good. Oh god, I, okay, I, I mean, I definitely... I definitely I played this one real poorly, but this is this is still very fun. Okay, you're not doing so hot as a... Actually, do the, the debuff and then get the heck out of there. I, I played this one real poorly. I, I definitely overestimated the strength of the elephants. But I think we'll still win it. I mean, I've still got Mulu around, which is good. I've still got all these units coming back from routing as well. Just get over somewhere where you can do something. He's a, a bit of a problem, but... Got these stingers back again as well. Turn around. <laughs> oh, elephants are fucking wild. I can't wait to have, like, proper battles with these guys once I figure out exactly how they work. Okay, we're messing him up right now. One of these... Ch this gore... This gore ability is my favorite ability right now. Fuck me, the damage on that is insane as well. Okay, we're getting into melee. They were hold back, so that's good. Hold back. Okay, we killed the general. Good. Let's go over... Oh, he's gone wild. Wow, really? He's fucking oathsworn already? Wu Che Li? Unbelievable. It's impressive, that. Anyway, let's kill Wuchili. That's a woman, by the way. Okay, let's see if we can do that. Oh, yes, it's gonna work. He's gonna do it in a second. He's gonna run out of it. Boom! Oh my god, the fucking damage, dude! She hasn't even fucking processed it yet. There, go there goes her morale. It's like, oh shit, I just got murdered. <laughs> I've just not realized I've been fucking slaughtered. Okay, let's go hunt someone else down. Oh my god, that ability is so much fun. My army is basically dead, but it's okay. Oh, I'm enjoying myself here, this is good. Okay, Mulu, time to murder someone else. Okay, you've... Oh, they came back just before the edge of the map. Holy shit, that's close. Okay, let's uh, have you guys kill them, please. Have I got anything remaining here? Yeah, I'm fighting like one unit. Thanks for the help, by the way, uh, ally. Uh, an morale debuff? Oh, he's fucked off already. Wow, he, was, he got slaughtered as well. I think that's about it, because they just routed. Hopefully I'll have enough stuff remaining to actually kill off the army after this, but I'm not sure if I will. Try and kill the general if you can. That's the downside of not being able, like, being so slow. I'll, I'll never be able to chase down generals in this with this army. Or at least not with my elephants, anyway. Um, God, I lost all my elephants. I definitely overestimated them a little bit. I sent them in. They can kill a lot of stuff, but they will die. They're not unkillable. It seems. Look at this fucking mess. Oh my god, there's so many elephants there. And replenishment's already so slow. It's gonna be even slower now that we don't have the mustering bonus anymore. Uh, that unit's down to seven, that one's gone. There's, yeah, it's definitely worth trying to chase them down if I can. 85 as well. Mulu, go. Go, Mulu, what are you doing? Why is he, are you stuck? Behind a dead elephant? Hello? Okay, that was weird. He's stuck behind a, a dead elephant or something. Go! Are they... Where's the... Oh, the Azimov's right there. Okay, never mind. 
close victory. Yeah, I'd say so. That was not a. It was not a good victory. But I, I just, you know, I just kind of overestimated my elephants. All right, they've got three reigning. Actually, that's also with the weird numbers, isn't it? Oh, get out of here, Menglo. I am at least in my own territory, so I won't punish. Ah, oh, I lost one of them. I mean, they'll come back, of course. It's three kingdoms, but still. What do we get? Some, wait, was that even a rare weapon? That looked like a normal colon. What? Uh, replenishment or the money? I don't think I need money right now. Replenishment's probably more valuable. Where did he go? There he goes. Get out of here. We're not far going to be able to run after this. I guess it was an ambush, so he doesn't have any movement remaining. He ran surprisingly far. Oh, okay. Well, I guess my vassal took care of him. I kind of need to go on the offensive now. That does mean their elephants are dead. Uh, wait, am I doing a ritual again? Is that other one already run out again? Holy crap. Um, let's just, yeah, let's stick to the elephant ritual. I mean, that's okay for now. Foreign visitor. Adapt for a mulu. Nice. That's pretty good. In the wake of your continued victories, <laughs> what, two of them, a foreigner arrives at your court, hailing from lands far from your own. Your victories, they say, are worthy of celebration, offer themselves as a follower and advisor to your rule. For good or for ill, they appear determined to remain in your employ. It's just a, it's just a fucking massive text for this, just a random ancillary, but I won't complain. Xing Mu, welcome. And I got, yeah, what? Wait, is that like an... Is, no, I already had that one available, Twin Flint Weapons. Yeah, I definitely have looked at that before. Oh, that's a nice ancillary the Iron Sickle. Uh, destroy any who would stand in your way until no foe's, foe remains. We've done one of our personal goals. So let's have a quick look at that, because I am going to end the episode here. Um, right, so we've got one out of three of that one. Now we have plus 10% melee armor piercing damage. I wonder if that also counts for the elephant. It still just say, says 3k. I guess it's... I don't know. Yeah, it's 3.3k, that's that's 10%. Oh my god, it does. This is only 2.7k, though, but it should be 3k, but I don't know. I wonder if I switch his weapons, if they also actually switch. Oh, I have an extra one. Oh, can they run out? Wait, is that... F I don't even know. It's a common weapon. Anyway, uh, that is going to be that for now, though. Man, I am very excited to play more. Unfortunately for me, I have to basically wait two, two weeks before I can play more. And I'm going to have forgotten everything about this, but I'm super excited to com continue playing this. It's actually been so much fun already. Um, I think I am gonna have to go on the offensive though. Maybe try and take a long way. Is that even possible? No, I have to. Okay, well, we'll have to wait and see because I do want to go on the offensive while I have the chance, but my army is a bit weak right now. And again, the elephants are maybe overestimated a little bit. But that will be that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I, I will see you soon for you guys. For me, it's gonna be a couple weeks. Um, I'm going on holiday tomorrow, basically, or tomorrow night. Um, but yeah, I'll see you all soon. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, until next time, have a good day and goodbye.